is the energy market right now much more sophisticated about the way that they are approaching these headlines coming out of Russia and Ukraine? I, I only ask because there are some out there who might have said, on this kind of a headline, I would expect oil to be up 10, 15 percent, but it's up about four to five percent and slowing down right now. So is the oil market getting yeah. better at trying to figure this out? No, I think it's a great question. And look, uh, the, the biggest challenge right now we have is that um, a lot of traders are actually not participating in this market. We've talked about the huge volatility in the margin calls before as well. That's keeping them away. And if you look at what has been going on over the last kind of few weeks, it's been this tussle between losses in Russian supply and how big can that get versus losses in demand because of the China COVID situation. So a lot of traders have said to me, you know what, day trading is actually easier right now rather than holding on to a long-term position because you've got kind of both sides effectively cancelling one another out right now. Now, going into the summer, that does look different, at least on our assumptions, because we do expect China to start recovering quite significantly in the second half of the year, infrastructure spending, but also COVID cases coming under control. Um, I think that's why you've seen all these price kind of, the reaction has been pretty muted, because we, the market at least seems to be pretty wary of the demand situation in China. I mean, I would say demand is still extremely strong outside of China. Yes, Chinese buying is muted, but we do think uh, cases are kind of coming down and Chinese buying is going to pick up because their stock levels are low. But that's where the real confidence is lacking in the market. What, what, what gets traders more confident in taking outright more bearish or bullish position bets on this market rather than just getting intraday in and out of the positions that they're already in? Where, where, where do they take a view? Right? What has to happen for them to say, you know what, it's good enough to say oil prices are rocketing higher or going to fall because of demand? Mm -hmm. what, what needs to happen? I think the issue is that you've got one on the positive or bullish side, i.e. Russia, and one on the bearish side, which is China. And that's why there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. But either side, if we get a couple of positive headlines out of China, The tricky thing with the European embargo, like, and you've mentioned this at the start as well, it isn't new. Um, I do think formalizing it will give more impetus to the market because, you know, we are talking about potentially winding down oil um, imports within six six months products by the end of the year. But again, the market's uh, looking into the details and saying, hang on, so many different countries are asking for exemptions. What does that mean? What do those volumes look like? And, you know, you could have Hungary, Slovakia getting potentially a 20-month wind-down period. Now, they are not the big volume importers, but still, it could add up. So I think with all these sanctions, with then you've had the SPR, I think people really need to or want to know the details of exactly how much oil will be lost from the market. And then it's going to be looking to China to get more clarity on the situation on the demand side.